In case you're unfamiliar with them, setter and getter functions allow you to write custom logic to be ran when a variable is written to or read from. In GDScript, you do this by adding the set get command after declaring your variable, followed by the names of the setter and getter functions in that order. You'll of course also want to make sure these functions are declared somewhere in your code with the setter function setting the variable to a new value and the getter function returning a value. If you only want a setter or a getter, simply use the same format but omit the undesired function name. So why care about this? As an example, let's say we have a game where the player's health should always be afloat between 0 and 100. Using a setter, we can make sure the value is clamped before being applied to the variable, such as in this code snippet. Another common use includes, say, emitting a signal every time a value is updated so that other objects that depend on that data can always be up to date. You could also run logic to make sure data being passed into the variable is of the right type, throwing an error if it's not and refusing to set the variable, and by similar logic, you can make a variable read-only by overriding the setter function to return without setting the variable to the new value. Though note that comment mentioning that this method only protects external objects from writing the value, internally an object is unprotected by default, but more on that in just a bit. So how about getter functions? What are the uses for them? Well, to be honest, I find myself not really ever needing them, but as an example, you could use them to represent a generator of some sort, calculating a value in a large or changing data set as needed, rather than storing everything in memory just to access one part of it. Such as with this classic computing example of the Fibonacci sequence. In this example, we store just enough data to calculate the next number in the sequence, rather than storing the entire list in memory or having to recalculate all the values leading up to the current value in sequence every time we just want the next value. Admittedly, this example is a bit of a stretch for a game dev context, but the same idea could apply to say always pulling out the latest entry from a log file, caching data from some sort of expensive calculation, etc. It's also important to note that getters and setters only apply when a value is accessed by an external object. When accessed internally, it's free reign unless you explicitly reference the variable using the format self.yourVariableName. This is how we can make a variable read-only but still update it internally as needed, making it a bit more flexible than declaring a constant which cannot be changed at runtime while still mostly protecting the value. So with this in mind, and using the Fibonacci code example, we can run it and get varied outputs depending on how we write our code inside of the script that defines the variable. Trying to change the variable using self.nextFibonacci runs our read-only setter and discards the new value, letting the following getter calls run as expected. But when we omit the self prefix, the value is overwritten with our string, which we can verify by reading it back out via, once again, omitting the self prefix. Once we include self again though, we call the getter function and an error is thrown since our array has been replaced by a string. So just be aware of how the behavior can change depending on the context with which you use variables that have getter and setter functions. And that's a quick introduction to getters and setters in GDScript. There's not a whole lot to them, but they can come in handy from time to time when you want to maintain certain constraints in your code base, be aware of changes in your data, etc. I'll link to the official documentation for them in the description.